What's up, Internet? If it were up to me, I'd spend my entire time in front of the computer. But unfortunately, the real world gets in the way. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. I have to walk the dog every day, I have to drive, I have to walk around doing errands, and while doing all of those things, I try to keep myself relaxed, especially while driving, by listening to podcasts. And in that regard, sobrang useful nung ROG Cetra True Wireless earbuds. They've come in very handy. I was not into podcasts before, but eventually found ones that I like. Let's shortcut that process for you. As a tech enthusiast, you might have the same taste as me or the same general inclinations. And if not, and you find all of my recommendations garbage, at least the list of podcasts that you don't want to listen to ever again has grown longer. So for this video, we'll go through some podcasts that I really like, some that I didn't like so much, and at the end of the video, I will have a job offer for you. Stick around to the end for you to hear it. But before that, I definitely like having activated windows, which I have thanks to the CD key I got from our sponsor. So wakana ba sa unactivated windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mo lang sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang umorder. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, nagsindigi ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sad and depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com First up, Revisionist History, a podcast by Malcolm Gladwell. Great podcast. I had tried other podcasts in the past, notably This American Life. Their serial series, the first one where they talk about a real-life murder in 1999 of a teenager in Baltimore. Very popular, critically acclaimed, but I just couldn't get into it. Revisionist History is the one that got me into podcasts and really showed me that they can be interesting and personality-driven. Essentially, Gladwell takes different bits of history, contemporary and past, and offers linkages between them. Like how before, McDo had the best tasting fries because they would essentially double fry them in beef fat. That all changed when a crusader in the States decided to get them to change the recipe, ostensibly out of health reasons. So you're constantly jumping back and forth in time. An obscure 1800 merchant has important bearing on the right to bear arms and how the US Supreme Court decided contemporary cases like that. Obviously, I don't remember all of the details, all of the facts, and that's what's fun about the podcast. Obviously, you're not expected to memorize. There is no quiz after. You can just kind of let those interesting ideas and connections soak in. My favorite episode is the one where Gladwell profiles a researcher. Now, this researcher had a dad who was also a researcher, and the dad's life work was basically collected in data, which was preserved and archived. So the son, also a researcher, medical researcher, was able to go back and using the data of his father, challenge the conclusions of his dad. Ginamit niya yung facts na inestablish ng daddy niya to prove that his dad was wrong. And at the end of the episode, the researcher was saying, I don't feel I was unfaithful or I don't feel it was a betrayal of my father's work. Because my father's work was not the data, my father's work was advancing science of establishing truth from data, not adhering to some dogma which isn't actually related to the facts that we gathered. So in overturning the conclusions of his dad, the researcher was saying that he was actually honoring his dad's memory. You may not agree with everything that Gladwell says. I don't agree with everything that he says. I have a suspicion that he doesn't agree with everything that he says. It's more of like being an intellectual provocateur. Parang he wants to tempt you with sometimes outlandish, always interesting ideas. 
Next one is one I didn't like. If books could kill, really let me down. It's a podcast about books. I love books. I love talking about books. Where could we go wrong? But the tone of If Books Could Kill really turned me off. It's two guys tackling how nonfiction bestsellers oftentimes get facts wrong, make illogical arguments, and are generally not as smart as the books think that they are. And while the two hosts do make good points on the inaccuracies of the books that they tackle or the flaws in their argument, before they get to that legitimate criticism, usually it's around 15 minutes of just bashing the book of the week. Now, I appreciate some snark in my life, but 15 minutes of it is over my limit. In a broader sense, it's similar to how off-putting it is to have, you know, that one friend who is super moralistic. Yung talagang palaging 100%, sigurado siya na tama siya. And you're either A, going to hell, or B, just plain dumb if you don't agree with him or her. Hanging out with those kind of people is no fun at all. If you can't approach a topic with respect, whether it's someone's religion, or a book that you're criticizing, or heck, just even what kind of flavor ice cream someone likes. If the bedrock of respect is not there, then how can the other party expect you to treat whatever the subject is fairly? To actually discuss something instead of just trying to score points of how terrible you think it is. On paper, this podcast should have been me. <laughs> The politics discussed, I generally lean in that direction. The books discussed, I usually have an interest in, but the tone was just really off-putting for me. The next are two podcasts, but they're by the same guy, so I'll just take them together as one. The History of Rome and Revolutions by Mike Duncan. So these are straight-up historical podcasts, and the host excels at taking a lot of research and making it very accessible. So the first one is a history of the Roman Empire all the way back. I mean like the founding of the city all the way up to empire, all the way up to decay. And the first few episodes are a little rough, especially if you start with revolutions first where he has already mastered his style. History of Rome came first. But after the first few episodes, he really gets into the groove and there are a lot of nice small details which he captures to make the wider scope of the history that he's talking about come to life. So you get the grand arc of the history, but at the same time, it's grounded in people and events and really very particular kind of details. I can't imagine the level of work that went into this, from the research, to writing the scripts, to producing, to recording, and he does talk about it a little bit as the series goes on. I started first with Revolutions, which is a history of different revolutions. The first is the British, and then American, and then the French. After the French, I decided to do backtrack a little bit to the history of Rome, which was his first podcast. And then I jumped back to revolutions. These are very long, but so worth it. I have a mild interest in history, so I am a little bit familiar with all of the events, but nothing on this scale. It really makes you appreciate the stuff that happened way back when. Sobrang vivid ng storytelling niya na when I was listening to the series on the French Revolution, I was starting to get nightmares because those French are crazy. I mean, you know, the guillotine, and dami mga dinadampot na lang, pinapatay, you know, scary times. So it's like little details fleshing out the greater historical narrative and also placing each revolution in context with one another. Great stuff, not dry at all. The host is very engaging. And this is my primary podcast. The others I will listen to and interchange or mix it up with Revolutions, but usually Revolutions is the one I'm listening to now. Now I admit that the podcast that I like can seem to be a bit highbrow, so I wanted to try something more mainstream. And what better than one of the most popular, if not the most popular podcast in the Philippines, Sky Podcast, hosted by married celebrity couple Slater Young and Chris Uy. And the chemistry of the hosts is great. Just because you're married doesn't mean that you can do something public like this well, but they pull it off so natural. There seems to be genuine affection between them. It really works for the podcast that one can reference, oh, do you remember that time that we did this or you said this and I did that? It rolls off so well from the hosts. And they are very engaging, natural storytellers. But man, the stories or the facets of their life that they choose to share 
on the show. One show that I listened to was the hosts kind of reminiscing that, you know, we're older now and a bit more mature, but in our younger days, we felt that fame was everything or being the most popular was everything. Yung tipong papasok ka sa club and everyone should look at you or you should always have designer because people should associate you na, oh, that's the kind of person who wears designer, whatever. He or she is a success. Or one of the hosts sharing that their point of view before was that the world revolved around them, that their parents were there to support, to make sure nothing ever happened, that the world was their oyster. And then the realization now that fame is not the end all and be all of everything. And now that they are parents themselves, they realize that they need to put the needs of others first. Other people are the priority now. And I agree that these realizations or epiphanies are productive, that that is a better way of looking at the world. But as someone who never cared about being popular, famous, I mean, this face, this face was not popular with the ladies. As someone who never cared about designer things, about manifesting success externally through the trappings, like, oh, I went business class, oh, I have designer this, oh, I have a fancy sports car. As someone who never cared about those things, I find it very hard to relate. There's a lot of life in Sky Podcast, but it's not life that I'm interested in. Ending with the latest podcast that I'm really enjoying now, Reply All. And this is a lot more bite-sized than revolutions or revisionist history. Initially, the format was a new app per week, but they quickly expanded it to a discussion about how tech has become ingrained in our lives, but we haven't really quite figured out how to really live with it. The hosts are very internet culture meme savvy. And one of the earlier episodes which stood out for me was their interview with the guy who created the pop-up ad. An enduring legacy of the internet, especially for those of us who grew up when the net was still new. They are not gamers, so their knowledge of certain genres or sub-niches of culture is a little limited or a little mainstream. So when they talk about doxing, a typical viewer of Hardware Sugar would probably know more about that than what they discussed in their episodes. But in general, in terms of breath and thoughtfulness in how we are to live with all of these changes around us wrought by our cell phones, our always online social media culture, these are snippets of life which are fascinating. So some podcasts that I liked, some I didn't like. If Feel free to agree or disagree. Please let me know in the comments if you do have some suggestions because I am constantly on the lookout for more podcasts to relax to while walking the dog. And as to the job offer that I mentioned at the start of the video, I am trying to upgrade our podcast. Hardware Sugar has a podcast, tech show but friendly. Before it was like general run-of-the-mill hardware news, I'd like to expand the scope of the podcast. So I need a producer or rather, in reality, what the producer would be doing would be like internet researcher. I want to dive into the memes of the Philippine internet. Ano ba yung uso sa mga tech enthusiasts ngayon na pinag-uusapan online? Whether that's some TikToker that claims a 50,000 peso build can do 200 FPS on Warzone or something like that, to the teacher who caught his students playing online games during an online class, sort of behind the scenes of those guys. And I admit I was inspired a little bit by Reply All, but I realized that I can't do that on my own. I need someone who is a very good internet detective who can sleuth online, find out where these people are and reaching out. If we can interview them, bring their story to a wider audience. Like I'd love to interview scammers. Do you ever wonder like, Yung mga nagte-text sa'yo na obviously scam, ano ba yung iniisip nila? What's their story? What's fueling these texts? Do they work all together? Probably a syndicate. So there's that, the kind of like the stories behind the technology that we experience every day. If you feel that you have excellent internet research skills, I am serious about this job offer. Please email us at hardware-sugar at gmail.com and we might be in touch depending if we have an interest in your resume. With that, happy listening. Thanks for watching. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. 
Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.